Good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Talari. I'm practicing as a general practitioner in Australia. I've recently passed my Australian Medical Council exam, where I've passed all my 16 stations, and I've learned lots of things uh, during the preparation for the exam. And I thought I will share those things with the other doctors and medical students and the candidates preparing for the clinical exams. So the importance of an emergency case, today I'm talking about approach to the emergency case and I can clearly tell you that whatever exam it is, whether it's an USMLE exam, Australian Medical Council exam, PLAB or New Zealand exam or any clinical exam, there will be one emergency station for sure. And if you can master the approach to an emergency station, I think you have passed one station and it's very easy to pass an emergency station if you know the right approach. So there are a few questions which everyone think about the emergency case. So how do you know it's an emergency case? It's the first question. How is the approach different from other scenarios? So how do you know it's an emergency case? So there are a few red flags in history taking. If it's chest pain, if it's severe abdominal pain, if, it, if the question says child with cyanosis, breathing difficulty after eating peanuts, I'm just giving few examples. Sometimes there will be clues in vitals. So you should know the vitals, you should know the red flags. So once you know this, you're reading the scenario outside the room and you see any of these, you should think or, or even you should think, sorry, it can be an emergency case or it can be another thing you can it will say uh, the patient has lost consciousness and is lying there or it can be uh, the patient has lost consciousness was brought by a stranger when he found the patient on the road or something like that they can frame it in many ways so based on that you know that it's an emergency case so second question how is the approach different to the other scenarios in the traditional history taking and uh, examination uh, cases, what we usually do is you start with introduction, you introduce yourself to the patient, then you take history of presenting complaint, you rule out the differential diagnosis, you examine the patient, you have a plan like you do investigations, then you treat the patient. So the approach is slightly different when it comes to an emergency case. In an emergency case, I think it's always better if you introduce to the patient first uh, then ask for the vitals from the examiner most of the exams like Australian Medical Council and PLAB will have an examiner in the room so you ask the examiner for the vitals and find out whether the patient is ill or well so once you know that the patient is stable you can start taking the history but if you know that the patient is unwell or if the vitals are bad then you have to shift, shift the history taking part and go to airway breathing circulation. Always ask the examiner for the SATs of the patient. If the SATs are less than 90 percent, uh, 90 then obviously you have to start him on high flow oxygen. It's same with the breathing pattern. How will you know the airway is patent? If the patient is talking to you, it implies that the his airway is patent and the circulation so you ask the examiner or you look at the vitals where it says the pulse is 130 per minute and the blood pressure is 60 by 40 or 40 by 20 or pulse is not recordable or blood pressure not recordable so this tells us the patient might be in shock so what you do so you immediately tell the examiner or you will say I'm starting um, some fluids on you for which I will put two large bore cannulas and I will give fluids at a very high flow rate. So now you are telling the examiner that you have looked for ABC and then once you stabilize the patient, you start taking history. Sometimes the patient might say it's he's having excruciating chest pain or excruciating abdomen pain. So the patient might not cooperate to you. Uh, and he might be acting as if he is having excruciating chest pain. So you should show empathy to the patient saying, Hello Mr. Smith, I can see that you are in lot of pain. And you should offer some analgesia. It's always good if you offer analgesia. 
So you should say, would you like something for pay before I start talking to you? That is a good way of starting the station and you get the confidence or you, you get the rapport with the patient. The patient thinks you are caring for him. So it's very important you show empathy and you offer analgesia. So once you do this or while you take this, you should always ask the patient because you are giving a medicine to him. So you should ask him, do you have any allergies? So if you are thinking of giving morphine or pethidine to the patient, always ask for allergies because most of the people or a vast majority of people will have uh, mild side effects or allergy to morphine. So always check it and give the medicine. It, it's not only with morphine, any medicine you are giving to the patient, always check whether he is allergic to it or not. So you ask him, do you have any allergies to morphine? Be specific. If you are giving morphine, ask him specifically, do you have any allergies? If he says no, then you tell the examiner, uh, I'm giving 2.5 to 5 milligrams morphine IV and I'm checking his vitals. This is very important because you are telling the examiner that I'm giving morphine. I know that it can cause respiratory depression and I'm looking at the vitals. So I think you have almost passed the station because you have done the right thing. You have stabilized the patient which is the most important thing in an emergency uh, case. So once you stabilize the patient, things are under control. So you have control over things now. So now you start taking history. So you say, hi, Mr. Jackson, could you please tell me about this chest pain? Or could you please tell me about this tummy pain? So the patient will start telling everything in a comfortable way. It's always important that you see that the patient is comfortable. Okay, so this is the most important approach what I've learned from few emergency consultants and few AMC examiners and the, by reading the other forums as well. So it's very important you stabilize the patient then take history and a few other tips uh, while you are preparing for the emergency case. You have to know the dose of adrenaline. This is one medicine which each and every doctor practicing medicine should know the dose of. So if you don't know the dose of paracetamol no examiner is going to fail you but if you say I don't know the dose of adrenaline it can kill the patient because recent evidence has shown that you can save the life of the patient in five minutes or sorry five seconds or ten seconds if you give adrenaline as soon as possible so it's very important you know the dose of adrenaline which is 0.01 milligram per kg body weight and uh, so how are you administering it most of the times it's safe to give it as intramuscular. So the dilution is 1 in 1000 if you are giving it intramuscular. But if you are giving intravenous, you should always dilute it 10 times which is 1 in 10,000 because intravenous is a big dose and just the dose of adrenaline if you give a high dose that will kill the patient. So it's always important you calculate the dose of the uh, adrenaline and just know how you are administering administering is very important as well in one exam where i was observing a candidate uh, the candidate said i'm giving seven milligrams of adrenaline to a patient so the examiner said stop the station and you are not taking any further history and you are clear fail because by giving seven milligrams of adrenaline you have already killed the patient so you, you have failed this so it's very important Please know the dose of adrenaline. This is one medicine each and every doctor practicing medicine should know the dose of. So it's very important you do this. And other most important tip is know how to do a CPR, which is cardiopulmonary resuscitation. It's very important. If it's an emergency case, there is a high chance that the patient might collapse. So you should know the basic cardiopulmonary resuscitation. I will do a video about CPR later. Uh, and the other most important tip is call for help. Always you should call for help. In most of the countries, uh, you should call for help if you think that it's an emergency station. And if you have any doubts on this video, feel free to leave a comment. I will answer all your comments. Or if you think there is a better way of doing this, please leave a comment so that I can also learn. And please subscribe to my channel so that I can send my ebook to all my subscribers and this channel is a free channel i'm 
you, you will not be asked for your credit card details or anything like that. So feel free to subscribe and you can get my ebook. Thank you very much. I'll see you later.